All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, very excited to be chatting with an individual set to compete at PFL MENA, the inaugural event, which goes down on May the 10th. And quite the intriguing bantamweight bout set to go down as Rashid Haas takes on Xavier Aloui and great getting to talk to Xavier today. How's everything going, man? You having a solid day? Everything's good, man. Solid day out in Riyadh. You know, we landed yesterday. Uh, flying from Canada took us like 24 hours and uh, we're already adapted. We're just about to go to the mall now and just kill time. You know, wake cuts going good. It's a vibe, you know, PFL's nice. We got here. All the everybody's uh, everybody's here, man. It's a tournament, you know. And I mean, you fought for so many organizations at this point, like TKO, ACA, you're a two-time UAE Warriors champion. When did the dialogue with PFL initially get going to kind of sign with those guys? After my last fight at UAE, I had beat that dude and they thought I lost and they gave me lose a split decision. So the PFL guys came and they told me, no, man, you won that fight. We're going to sign you. I said, okay. I was going to say, that must have really lifted your spirits because sometimes when there's those like polarizing decisions yeah, but, and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. But bro, my life, look at my record, bro. I only lost split decision. I never won a split decision. I got like four split decision losses, bro. I don't give a fuck anymore, you know? Like, when it happened, I was like, fuck it, bro. I'm just go back to the gym, get ready to fight again. Fight some next dude, keep fighting, keep making money, you know? But then when they came and they offered me that, I was like, fuck. I was like, this is great. I was like, look, life turns out not so bad. Yeah, for sure. And I guess kind of speaking to that, like the last time we spoke was circa late 2020, like around November. It was after your Juarez D fight where you captured the vacant UAE Warriors title. Like how much has changed both like, I guess, professionally for you and just in your life in general? Oh, well, bro, I own two gyms now, like fully by myself, like with no partners. And like, I'm like, I mean, I have partners that are like shared profit, you know, but like a... Things move, man. I got rid of the old ones, got some new ones. Everything's good. Uh, two kids, bro. Um, I'm happy, you know, like I'm really fighting because I enjoy it. I'm really out here because I want to put on a show. Like I tell the guys, man, that's what I've been telling them. You're putting me here because I'm going to knock somebody out. I'm going to submit somebody and I'm going to give you guys highlight reels. That's really all. That, that's what matters to me right now. And it's interesting. I mean, congratulations on the gyms, by the way. But the last time we were talking you were training out of tristar like are you still training out of tristar and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Running still training out of tristar. i'm training out of tristar headquarters i own the tristar in the west island so um i have uh two tristars to train out of but of course for the pro training it's better to go to headquarters where i have most of my partners and um training hard man tristar is doing good the, the weight class has changed over there it used to be 170 it used to be like a 185 or all the big boys now it's all little dudes you know it's like me arnold you know, Ayman and Louis were like a bunch of uh, 45ers, 35ers. So it was very suited for us. Yeah, and I was going to reference Ayman. I mean, just so cool to see what both of you guys are doing. Like, you're with PFL now. He's doing great in the UFC. It's just awesome to yeah. see all that, man. You know, we work for it, man. If we, if we didn't get it, then we work for nothing. <laughs> You know, I was going to say, if you get your ideal outcome with, uh, you know, PFL Mina and you end up collecting that big prize at the end, your nickname, the bread man, could take on a different yeah. meaning if you catch my drift. Nickname, the nickname, the bread man didn't come from 100K, bro. Three fights from for 100K, like, <laughs> you know, like, I want that million, bro. You know what I'm going to do with 100K? Barely pay my year, you know? Come on. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. It's just kind of cool. You also referenced being a dad now, because I remember the last time we talked, I was kind of like citing a photo that you had around like 1994, where it's like you and your dad were kind of practicing some martial arts. It looked like like he showed you some hand to hand combat true. on the beach. It's kind of cool now that you're now in the position of being a father. Like I imagine that's given you even bro, additional like, motivation. Yeah, bro, it's crazy that you're saying that. I get goosebumps, you know, because that photo, I was the age that my son is now. So it's crazy what you're saying. So it's true. I never, I didn't even realize that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a vibe. I, I get to teach my, my son started training too. So, so I really get to do what I want and what I love and share it. I guess that's what I was going to ask too. Like, are they getting involved in martial arts now? It sounds like they are. Yeah, based yeah, on, the kids, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're training, boxing, everything. No, it's awesome, mm -hmm. man. That must make you so proud to kind of see them kind of begin their journeys and like i said kind of referencing the photo like creates a cool lineage that's awesome 
Yeah, yeah, it does, man. Thanks for pointing it out. I didn't even make the connection until you said it. So yeah, definitely. It's a, creating a lineage, leaving a dynasty, you know, like showing the example. And it doesn't mean I want them to fight or fight pro, but I need to, they need to know where this family comes from. This family comes from fighting arts and martial arts, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of referenced it a little bit earlier, like talking about how it's a vibe over there. Like, what is it like in Riyadh and stuff like that? Like, are you able to get up to anything out there? It seems like you're soaking some level of like the atmosphere in at the very least. Yeah. 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 Ben, you know, the Middle East is all about the big malls and all about the stores and, and the inside AC, you know, so that's pretty much what it is. We're going to malls, we're doing some shopping, we're getting good food to the stash for after the weigh in, you know, and it's just typical fight we got in the Middle East, hot outside, you go out at night, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. It just seems like a cool experience getting to, yeah. you know, kind of travel a bit for your work. I imagine that's kind of like a fun part of it, like obviously focused on the business end of it, but it's probably like a cool sort of like, I guess, tendril to it, I suppose. You're absolutely right, because with time and age now, I got to enjoy it. You know, I'm now I'm at the point where I am, I'm here and I'm not stressed. I'm, I know how to cut my weight. I know how to do my thing. I'm, I'm just having my opponent in mind. My opponent is always on my mind. You know, I'm thinking about it, but I'm not nervous. Going to do my thing. Going to get to fight night. Get a little bit more nerves on fight night and fight. Yeah, and I mean, you strike me. And I mean, really, a lot of the guys with your team is like guys who are very analytical and studious about the guys you're readying to fight like what have you seen from Rashid Haas in terms of like I guess some of his better stylistic attributes I've, and seen, I guess, kicks. Yeah. I've seen a, a lot of kicks you know from a distance a lot of uh, shooting to wrestling you know so the guy is well-rounded and like I don't know what he's gonna go for but I know what he uses type of thing so I'm like I'm kind of expecting not expecting you know I don't want to be expecting too much and have a false uh, expectation so i know what he does i know he shoots i know he throws a lot of kicks uh maybe he's gonna throw a lot more hands this time so i'm i mean i'm ready for it all you know it's gonna be my like i like to say it, it's my it's my style i'm gonna impose what i do i'm not gonna react to him he's gonna have to react to me yeah, I guess you don't want to get like too preoccupied in what he might do. And then you're overly thinking about that as opposed to implementing your game plan and what you're good at. Exactly. Well said. And I guess like, it seems like there's like just, I mean, a lot of great technique, obviously with you guys. But like when I was talking to Eamon, it just seems like there's like a very, I guess, just like cerebral aspect to it as far as like how that can inform your composure in the fights. Like how much, I guess, of the, I guess, mental work slash like psychology end of it do you delve into to kind of get into that flow state and comfortability for fight night? Man, it's crazy. It's just all right. I'm uh, just slowly, slowly easing into that. You're right, man. You know, and this is, this is still pretty new to me. My last few fights to make it a lot more, like you said, Analytical, mental, I always did, but I always push, push, push. And I'm, I mean, I'm still pushing, pushing hard. But what I mean, what you're saying now is very true, where you have to, you have to rely and be confident on your technique, you know, technique brings confidence. So then you can actually flow state exactly like you said. And once you flow state, then after that, like, you're, you're yeah. You know, it's uh, chain wrestling or chain striking, and it's one after the other, striking to wrestling, wrestling to striking, and you're just in your state. Yeah, yeah, I'm super confident in the technique, everything we learn. That's why I call, TriStar Gym is amazing for that, you know. It, uh, you really build solid foundations, so you're ready to face anything at any time, any situation. Yeah, for sure. And probably like being on a circuit like PFL probably breeds that certain level of, I guess, composure and familiarity like at least in as far as like how often you'd be able to fight across this like four event yeah. stretch with pfl mina yeah i love that i love that staying active and just kind of like always like staying on your toes because it's the season man i'm with that i love that and you kind of alluded to it a bit earlier which i thought was kind of fun and just shows how goal oriented you are like obviously not overlooking this immediate task but based on how you were phrasing it earlier it seems like your ultimate goal is to get that pfl mina championship belt but then vault into like the regular pfl season on the main stage thereafter is that kind of what you're looking at of course man you know i mean i definitely yeah <laughs> i wanted to get that mean of those things right we got to do things in order but yeah 
all I'm saying is that, you know, winning the 100K is not going to change my life. I'm just going to, it's going to be another fight. It's three fights for 100, I mean, you know, but three fights for Millie, oh, no, that's different. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm kind of curious because, I mean, he obviously has like since retired and not been there for a bit. But I mean, like Rory McDonald is a TriStar alum that kind of comes to mind, especially in like a PFL context. Have you at all been able to pick his brain as far as like methodology to utilize throughout a PFL season at all? Man, Rory's been MIA, bro. MIA, we don't know. I haven't seen him. He, I know he trains in a nobody's gym and he likes to be there and he's retired, you know, he's having a good life. I think he did it. He's doing it how he should do it, you know? Yeah, it was admittedly a bit of a shot in the dark kind of question, but I started thinking about like TriStar and PFL and kind of was putting a couple of things together. But no, good to hear he's enjoying his retirement. Definitely much deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big time. I guess just talking about like your broader track record too, in the context of how like PFL usually works, I feel like it would also be a beneficial framework because like over the years you've shown a certain adeptness at like securing a few submissions for sure. And obviously like striking based finishes to your credit, which definitely works well in terms of like those garnering, like the bigger kind of points and stuff like that. Like, obviously you don't want to like be too pursuant of the finish and get outside of like what your, I guess, game plan or, approach might be and be defensively irresponsible but do you think your broader track record kind of reflects well in like the pfl points driven kind of framework and everything of course, of course bro i want all the finishes you know i want to of course i want the five points i want all the points for every round <laughs> you know and that's what i like from pfl too when you see the guys fight they're rushing man you know so that's good yeah, it definitely informs like a certain level of action within the fights and everything like that, just because of how much it can advance you throughout the season and stuff For like sure. that. So, yeah, I mean, I guess just saying that, like, have you been, I mean, you, I guess you strike me as a guy that would kind of study the field in general, but were you watching a fair bit of PFL before you ended up getting yeah, signed yeah, yeah. by the promotion? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's always been a high level and I enjoy watching it also because it was new and they were signing top talent. So, yeah, 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 big time. I studied, I know the point system, I know I know all the approach, I see how the guys fight, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. I love that, man. Just going to be such an interesting fight. I guess kind of like you were talking about being out there. Like, who are you out there with? Like, who's going to be in your corner for this one? So my corner is my my coach, Chris Pomier, is my conditioning coach. He also does some striking with me. Um He's he's uh, he's been with me forever, you know. Like when I say my new partners at the gym, that's my guy. That's who's with me at the gym now, and um, I've been with him training for like fifteen years now. And yeah, yeah, he's built me all. He knows me well, you know. I'm at the point. I have Neil Shepard too, so I have the guys from the from TriStar that are here that are going to be in my corner for sure. You know, bring the technical side. But really, who's in my corner? It's Chris. He's in my he's in my corner. He's in my head. He's in my heart. You know what I mean? We're we're connected like that. And when we go out here, we have a good time. We enjoy things. And when it's time to be serious, we're serious. No, it's awesome. It seems like you would have like such a perfect balance. Like you said, I mean, it can be lighthearted at certain times and whatnot, but also like when it's time to, you know, conduct the business, you both are right in the pocket there too. So great. You have that kind of familiarity and rapport with the people you're with, man. Exactly. Thanks, man. But yeah, it's great getting to talk to you. Like I said, it's been a while, Xavier. So cool to kind of catch up and hear how you're doing in life and everything, man. Yeah. But Thanks, yeah, bro. yeah. Hopefully next time we catch up, I got that I got that million dollar, bro, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say a lot of cool things coming up for sure. Chief among them, the fight you have coming up later in the week. And I guess like in, even saying that, thanks for making the time to chat during the actual week of the fight, man. Come on, bro. Anytime for you, bro. But just in the interest of being mindful of your time and schedule, I mean, I want to let you get back to having some fun. Maybe you have some other interviews, et cetera. Like, is there a final thought you might want to add as we're wrapping up, Xavier? Um, final thought. This is for ArabsMMA.com, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, so final thought is, guys, make sure you tune in and you keep getting your news from ArabsMMA.com. You know, if you want all the best content out in the Arab MMA world, well, you know where to go. And uh, watch me get a finish that night on Friday.
yeah, it's going to be an awesome fight coming up against Rashid Haas. And just cool to see this kickoff PFL Mina event. Definitely a great Bantamweight fight that people can check out on May 10th. But again, to reiterate, Xavier, thanks so much for making the time and chatting, man. Hopefully you have a good rest of your day and looking forward to checking out the fight when it goes down too. Awesome, Dylan. You have a great day as well. Take care. You too, man.